She said, the shaitan. And she's thinking, oh, I'm the daughter of Abu Bakr. I'm the wife of the prophet. I have a shaitan? She said, yeah. She said, even thou, Rasulullah? said, yes. But Allah has allowed me to conquer that shaitan. And he only suggests good to me. That means the Prophet Sallallahu was human. There was an alternative force always trying to whisper and get him to do wrong, right? Oh, you ain't no prophet, man. You've been drinking. You've been, you done went crazy. You know what I mean? Talking to prophethood. You, you ought to be shaming yourself running around here talking like that. Getting everybody all stirred up and killed and hung all on. You know, talking all that mess. Got hot rocks on Pobalal. Look at him out there. And you talking about you got a word sitting up in that cave. You know what I mean? This is Shaitan. Shaitan be busy. He ain't got it. Don't nobody. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, yes, I have that alternative voice and focus on me. But I have conquered him. And now, this is added commentary, if he wants attention from me, you know, people want attention. If shaitan want any attention from me, he have to suggest good stuff. Yeah, he can't come with that, oh, you ain't nobody. You, you just, he can't come with that. If the shaitan wants, this is the Sahih Muslim. You ever heard this hadith before? I, I hadn't heard that one, but I've heard the narrations about the... Um, he only suggests, yeah. yeah. Okay, this is a hadith. This is Sahih Muslim, so this is pretty... So, if we're going to look at ourselves, what does this mean to us? You want to go somewhere big, you want, to live, you want to be hopeful, you want to be optimistic. The shaitan is not about optimism and hope. He, he going to find anything he can find. It don't make no difference whether it's a little thing or a big thing. He going to put that out there for you to get paranoid, uncomfortable. You wake up in the middle of the night with an idea you think is your idea, you know, and it's old shaitan, whispering waswasa. And then he whispers, and then he withdraws after. And then you think the bad idea is yours. You go out and steal something, and you thought, man, I, man, that was a bad idea. Well, it wasn't your idea. Shaitan suggested that to you, and then he disappeared. And then you think, this is all psychological, you thought, man, I, I did wrong. I messed up. Now you're beating yourself. I, I'm not any good. I stole something. I did this. Right? Yeah. Hey, you blaming yourself. But it wasn't you. It was the shaitan. Right? Okay. A lot of people have backed up, and a lot of people have, uh, they're good Muslims, but they do things that don't make sense as far as, oppression and not speaking out. But now the new, younger Muslims, they getting a little, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Restless, and they talking too. They, they not, uh, they not uh, as scared as their parents. You got to remember, their parents came here uh, during this period of the 80s, late 70s and 80s, and they wanted blah, 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 blah. And they saw what happened to Negroes and others. So they, uh, they had a quietness about them. Okay, but the young people are saying they're kicking out behind anyway. You know what I mean? And all these cowards care, da, 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 da. all the young people, they're saying, we're not putting up, we not, you know, so guess which way they're coming? They're coming our way. I mean, they're coming our way in a whole crew, the whole crew, let's say 25 below. They already see what happened to you, 
and they know American history. See, they've been the, the other ones that came here, they wasn't raised here. Only thing they know about America is the streets is paved with gold. Right? And what they saw in the Propaganda. And when they got here, when they what they saw what was going on, it scared them to death. But they got the education, they get a little money, so they would be quiet. Their kids are born and raised here. Just think about it. They're Americans. Born and bred Americans. And they got us that gives you a streak of rebelliousness, whether you they know it or not. And they mix with white kids and they mix with everybody and they see their neighbors, they're probably not in too much debt because their parents kept them out of it. But they look at all the kids they go to school with, they in debt up to here and they got all kind of, hey man. And then guess what else they see? This beautiful American dream. They see nice little white kids are drunkards on campus. You know, that's the goal is to get drunk, to get plastered out of, to put this mean, miserable life away, get it away. And also the debt burden. I can't get no job paying no more than four or five dollars an hour and I got, don't become a doctor, good God Almighty, Let's say you might have two hundred thousand dollar debt, and it goes up if you don't pay. You know what I mean. So you can pay twenty thousand dollars a year, and and the instant went up twenty thousand because you ain't paying fast enough. All of that is happening. See, when I was in Iran, I was giving a lecture at Zahra University. It's for young ladies. And some of them had been influenced by, well, we have to wear hijab and we have to do this and we don't have uh, freedom. I said, well, take your hijab off then. I said, go on out there. I said, hmm. I said, then be like the American girl. They're the ones told you. I said, American girls commit suicide then. Blow your brains out or drink yourself to death. Yeah. Or oh, how old are y'all? 20 years old? Hmm. Some of you would have had a, about five babies by then, the ones that wouldn't use birth control. I said, the rest, you're, de- you're destroying your body. The side, the side. Yeah, and you didn't had abortions. You didn't kill three babies in the last couple of years. I was telling them, I said, that picture they show you about America, I say the people committing suicide is students. Young people that got their whole life in front of them. There were a couple, what I remember, that are suicide from my campus. Yeah. Can you imagine their whole life in front of them? And if you look at it, you don't see nothing wrong. You don't see nothing wrong? Why would you? Suicide is a sign of desperation. That means that people have been sold this garbage and it begins to smell and well up in them and they can't take it anymore. Okay, now, about Daoud to the rescue. Allah gave him power, wisdom, and taught him whatever else he needed to know to get the job done. And it is his job. If the good people don't check the bad people, it's going to be, the earth going to be, it's going to be forest fires. Don't say that here, but that's what it means. They're going to burn up the whole earth. You can't drink no more water out of nothing. You can't drink the water in the creek run by my house. You you drink that, you'll drop dead on the spot. Right? And if you pump any water, it used to be we used to all have pumps when I was a kid. When I was, we had a pump, you know, to go out and pump water. Boy, that, or we had a rain barrel, you know, the water went down, it went into the rain barrel. 
And you, that's the water you drink and the water you use for everything, from the rain barrel and uh, the pump. You know, okay. They call that spring water now. The water we was drinking is just wonderful water. We just thought it was regular water, you know. Hey, man. And I was born in the 40s when I was four or five years old. The earth was still kind of nice, you know. It was really nice. Hey, that's a long time gone. Okay. For us, we're going in, we're in, we're not going into a new stage. We're in a new, we're in that stage right now. Uh, and our next move is really, well, I, I'll just be straight out with it. Just right now, yeah, we will be going back to California to do some da 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 da. But our next move, our a real next move right now is um, if you notice we've never moved anybody into these houses. Anybody else look and say that's uh, crazy. Why not rent it to nobody, to somebody? We got that. We got our stuff downstairs. We got plenty of room. This will all be remodeled uh, soon and to the first stage of central headquarters, house next door over there, you know, somebody come into town for a conference. But we're going to, like in 81, we were stepping out there. Yeah, we're stepping out there again. And we've been, uh, this ain't nothing new, but I wanted to bring the other things so when I say this right here, what I'm getting ready to say, it won't look like, and that nigga went to sleep last night and woke up this morning. Uh, he left Juma and must have took some acid. You know what I mean? And now he's out there, right? I mean, that's what it would sound like. But uh, so let me uh, try to explain where we are now and what we want to do. We looked at where we are and we hinted at many things. We minute we hinted at oh we like to go around and talk to all the black youth at the black colleges. We will. And we wanna do this, we wanna do that. But the earth is history is not waiting on us. This evolution and hit us right smack dab in the, in our eyes. And I'm going to give a little idea of what we might consider uh, our solutions to the problem. Okay. We've always, we've talked recently about not being affected by paralysis or and analysis, we are analyzed so well, like any university, they do, they analyze, but they're par paralyzed. Technically, we've never done that. Now, delay is another thing. As I'm talking, remember the hadith on delay. You know, the delay is a part of Islam, you know. And delay is definitely a part of our mission. And we talk about delay, we talk about longevity, we talk about all of those things that go over a long period of time. We've studied a lot about our great leaders that they didn't have time. And the ones that did have a little, a long time, uh, they, during the rebellious period of the 1960s and early 70s, that people didn't even talk about Paul Robeson. He had skill and he had time in, 
but they didn't ask him anything. They just didn't converse with him. They left him out. All of his experience was, didn't go for nothing. We can't depend on dummies for our future. Dummies. The people that are running the world now, they dummies, dumb. Oh, boy, they not no little dummies either. Tell the truth. We're not going to leave our life in the hands of real live dummies. Now, I'm talking about, anyway, just if you want to see what a dummy is, just uh, stick around. They're dummies. Okay. We have to appeal to the people. 